Hey guys, Joe at Small Home Africa Prepping. Welcome to our channel. So today we're going to be putting in a uh, transfer panel and a transfer switch um, for the solar here. Um, what this is going to do is this is going to, if the power is on, then it's going to run automatically from the power company. But if the power goes off, it'll swap over to the solar automatically um, without me having to do anything. That way, if I'm not home, I'm sleeping at night, um, whatever, and the power happens to go out, the solar power will come out automatically by itself and I don't have to worry about the refrigerator. Um, not running. I'm going to put some lights in there, the TV, my security system, stuff like that. Um, so the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to actually have to take this panel over here. Um, this is a pretty well brand new panel. You guys can see the date over here. This was the panel that I was actually using um, for my temporary power when we were building this place here. And now I've moved a bunch of the circuits out of this panel. You see some of the projects that we've been doing and I told you I've been disconnecting temporary wire and moving stuff permanently. Uh, that's a lot of the stuff I pulled out of this panel here. So I got a really, really good Siemens panel with a copper bus bar. Um, this thing is quite expensive when I actually put it in. I didn't want to put it in. We had a different panel. Um, like I see, you see here, I did this in... Uh, 2021, I believe it was probably sometime around January, I really can't exactly remember, but uh, I purchased this around 2021, and we had gotten hit by a huge, huge power surge that fried out the other one. Um, I think I still even have that, I might show you guys in a couple minutes here. But um, that's what happened, I had to buy this, um, I actually took a day off of work and had to redo my entire, put a new meter can in, a new panel. Um, had to redo the entire thing. It took me probably about five or six hours to redo everything after we got hit by a power surge. Um, but now I'm not really using this panel. So again, it's a really, really good panel. And you see here, I've been rounding up a bunch of stuff. Um, I got some arc fault breakers because some of the circuits I'm moving will need to be arc faulted. Um, these are panel blanks that you see down here, which basically what that means is where you have the panel cover like this here. Um, I got four five six seven spaces this is an 816 panel so there's eight circuits to begin with and i can put tandems in to create 16 circuits i'm only going to be moving five from what i can figure here so i'll have to put what's called panel blanks which are just covers that go over the holes over here little slats there um and then you see down here this is called a ko seal i have i only need two openings on this panel and i have three of them open so one of them i'll have to put a ko seal in to um, block off the hole so this is the panel we're going to put in and we're going to go start mounting this here and this is the transfer switch that i'm putting in over here and you see the way a transfer switch works um, this is a magnetic contactor inside of here okay so when the power is connected to uh, i believe it's these two on the top over here i'll have to check the diagram but um you have a hot and a neutral coming in and an energizer magnet that actually pulls this in and makes these points let's see if we can see a little better here yeah you see these points down there they swap back and forth, okay? So the spring pushes it this way um, when you run it on one side of the power. When that power actually comes on on the other side, the magnet will actually suck these points down in like that and make contact. So that's an automatic transfer switch. Um, like I said, power being connected to it, it will automatically, there's a magnetic coil that will automatically pull the points to one side. Um, then when that power is interrupted, the spring snaps it back to the other side. So we're going to be wiring in the solar power on one side and we're going to wire in the utility power on the other side. Um, the first step though is we're going to go mount this panel here and I'll show you guys where we're going to mount this and how we're going to do that. Okay, so you guys have seen this before. Um, you see one of the pipes, I've been rounding stuff up here. i got a pipe sitting here ready to go in. Um, this is the actual inlet right now, the generator um, inlet and solar inlet right over there. Um, this over here comes from the power inverter. You guys have seen the videos. If not, we'll include them at the end here. And this right now is going to work on the AC still, but it's not. I'm not transferring the air conditioning circuit here. Um, reason being, if I'm gone for a long time, I'm out at night, I really don't want the AC flipping over. Um, this house is so well insulated that we usually keep the AC at, you know, during the day, probably about 75 or so. If the power went off even in the summertime, by the time it hits 79, five or six hours would go by. So as an emergency, if I'm not here, I want to be able to control the air conditioner myself. Um, I probably will put another transfer switch in to do that, but I haven't quite figured that part out yet because, like I said, I don't want that coming on by itself. I want to still control that. So but now we're going to be uh, taking circuits out of this panel over here, and what we're going to do is we're going to mount... It's kind of closing, but this panel here is going to kind of mount like this on the wall right next to it. When I get this mounted, I'll put this in and show you guys here. And then, like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the circuits out of here that I want to run um, in the transfer panel, and I'm going to move those over. I'm going to run a pipe along the bottom here coming up into the panel there. So um, right now I'm going to go ahead and mount this, and I'll be back once we get this thing mounted. Yeah, so I did still have this here. I kind of just, when I did the other thing, this is all garbage here, and I never really got rid of it. Um, this is the old panel that burned up. I told you guys I had to replace, and it's just, since I put it in, it's just been sitting off to the side of the pole in the bushes here. Um, I'll get rid of it eventually. There's nothing here to salvage, but you can see if you look down in here, 
Um, look at where all this melted. It heated up so bad that it melted over here. Uh, same thing along over here. We got hit with such a big power surge um, that it just completely took this thing out. And over here, um, you can see in the meter can, you see how this thing is all melted and bent around and this and that. And um, like I said, it was a huge, huge surge. I had a, it was a good lesson for me because um, you know we live in Florida. This is the lightning capital of the world, and as an electrician. I've probably told thousands and thousands of people how important it is to have a surge protector. Well, I had a surge protector. Um, I should rephrase that. I've told thousands of people how important it is to have a good surge protector. Uh, I had one, which I figured would be okay, um, you know, because this was only temporary. It was only a 60-amp service that was feeding the RV and a bunch of lights on the property and, um, you know, washer, dryer, stuff that we put in the shed, which was all more than enough electric for what we were doing here. Um, but I had a chintzy surge protector on. I only had one ground rod because that was all that was required, um, you know, for this kind of service at the time, a temporary service. And like I said, we got hit with such a bad surge that it couldn't divert through to the ground and it backed into the neutral. And you can even see the neutral wire over here. Look at how it's all um, discolored, how it heated up all the insulation. Just completely melted on this thing over here. It's just all coming right off there. So it came in through the neutral and it just completely, completely fried everything here. So that is the old panel and meter can that I had to take out. And like I said, I don't need this anymore um, because, you know, I still have another panel over there that I'm using as a sub panel for the lights and everything else that's on that. Um, but I don't need the bigger panel that I'm taking out and putting in. So I just want to show you guys real quick here what happened to mine while I had to replace this here. Um, and let's go uh, put that panel in. All right, so yeah, you see I got the panel uh, sitting up here. I got to put a couple more screws in. I just put a couple in on the top over here, and I wanted to show you guys. It's mounted right next to this panel here. So like I said, I'm taking the circuits out of the main panel here that I want to run on the solar, and I'm going to move them over into here. Um, and all I did was I just used Tapcons. You see here, I'm going to just let you guys watch. Okay, so yeah, just had to see that hole there. I'm just going to drill this Um, this is a cement board that goes in. Tapcons are rated for wood. And we just screw that in. And that's it. So I just want to show you guys how I did that. I just drilled it, put a Tapcon in. I did these two on the top here. I will put one in here and one in there. When this was on a power pole, um, the holes on the outside didn't line up. So we had to use new holes and put in here and screw to the power pole. Um, so just so those aren't empty holes, I'll go ahead and put a Tapcon in there. So And down on the bottom here. So I got what one, two, three more to put in. And then I'll show you guys how we're going to start pulling the wires over. Okay, panel's all mounted. You see how nice and level this thing is here. So it's just sitting next to my uh, other main panel right over here. Um, we got the three tap cons on the top, three tap cons on the bottom here. So now we're going to start pulling the circuits over. Um, like I said, there's five if I calculate it correctly. I'm not sure. I might come across six. But um, again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them out of this panel over here, the main panel, move them into that panel. So let me show you how we do that. All right, so, yep, you guys remember this panel. If you follow this channel, then you've seen um, this panel many, many, many times. We've been here a bunch of different times doing a bunch of different work. But um, what we're going to do, you see here we have the knockout that's already been taken out over here. It's a half-inch knockout. And if you look down in that corner right over here, um, you can see another one, which we'll take out from the bottom. We'll just pop that up from the bottom. And you guys know I'm not a big fan of flex. Everything is hard piped here. Um, the problem being, you see, like I did this here to make this 90, I had to come out and use an LB here and then 90 up into this. If I do that here, um, it's going to take it too far. It hits this over here. It'll come out and hit this right over here. So I'm going to flex up and then come into here. And then this side over here um, is going to be from the uh, transfer switch, but it'll be the solar side that'll come back into this panel here. And as you see, um, I try to line that up to be perfect so the pipe just comes along the side of this over here. Um, so for now, like I said, we're going to get up underneath here um, to the side there right over here and take that knockout out. All right, guys, so yeah, I got this thing mounted in here. I got the um, arc faults in. I've connected them over here. One thing I do want to point out to you guys, you see the wires that I pulled through here? Um, notice I got red tape on this one. I have two red tapes on this one, and I have a red and a green on this one. Okay, these are three circuits I pulled through so far. Um, I need to pull two more neutrals, two more hots over here. I think I'm going to hit this knockout right over here, um, and then probably come from this knockout to the back over here so I can keep the pipe all in the back along over here. Um, but the reason I did that, if you see here, it's the same coming into the panel over here. Um, one red, one green, two reds and one red down over here. So these are three circuits I pulled in. So the reason I did that is when I separate these circuits, what I'm gonna do um, when I do this is, I think this one up here is one of the ones I'm doing. Can't remember exactly what it is, but I seem to remember the one on the top. 
Um, no, that's not. Let's see. Microwave, refrigerator. It's this one right here. So this is my refrigerator breaker right here. So what I'm going to do is I'll disconnect these two wires right over here, and I will connect the neutral um, and the hot. So I'll wire nut those together, kind of like we wire nutted this over here. So I'm going to take these off of the breaker. I'm going to wire nut them together, and now they're already pulling through here into this panel. Um, so then I'm going to connect one to the hot, one to the neutral, and that's what's going to move this. So from there, we're going to have a main power wire coming in here from the transfer switch. The transfer switch, depending on what it's going to be doing, is going to be sending either solar power um, from the inverter or AC power from the power company, one of the two, and it will power this entire panel. That switches over automatically. When the power is on, and power is running from the power company, um, then this is all going to run on the power company. As soon as the power turns off, if there's a storm, anything happens. The power goes off, the transfer switch automatically transfers over and then sends power into this panel here from the inverter, from the solar itself. So it's an automatic transfer. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to pull the power line over here. Now, I'm not going to film the trenching. Um, when I put this in, I showed you guys how to dig a trench, how it has to be um, 18 inches from the top. We'll include that video on the bottom here. Um, you know, in the links um, and the thumbnails, whatever. Uh, so you guys can see it if you want to see. But this is, we already trenched this. I'm going to have to do this again. So I'm just going to get in, get out, and get that thing done um, instead of filming that part. Because again, you guys have already seen that. I don't really need to film things twice. So then from there, it's going to come up from here. It's going to run into the transfer switch. Then we're going to have to put a 30 amp breaker in here, 30 amp single, not a double, a 30 amp single. Um, and then again, we're going to pipe coming over into the transfer switch as well. So that's where it'll get its utility power from. Um, I'll have to connect the solar and inverter to that and then that's the two power coming in and then the one power line will come back into this panel over here so like I said what that will do in a storm it will isolate when the power's out it will isolate this panel over here so um, like I said I probably you guys see how I did this here I'm not sure I'll film the other I don't want this video to get too too long this is a pretty big project there's still a lot to do here so I'm gonna break this down into at least a couple maybe three videos so it doesn't end up being an hour and a half long um, so what I think I'll do like I said I'll trench it um, dig that pipe i'll get this line in here i do have to go pick up a disconnect i think i'll be able to get into town over the next couple of days it's about the only thing i'm missing at this point um i've been in so many electric doing so many electric projects you guys know that i am completely stocked these are actually extra arc fall breakers here i won't need to take any out of here i'm disconnecting four from here um and then one of the regular breakers right over here um and i won't need i'll just leave these in to fill the space in so i probably won't even need i might need one palm panel blank here i'm not sure so, but anyways, um, guys, once I get that done, like I said, then um, the next video, we're going to be uh, connecting up the transfer switch. We're going to connect the solar to the transfer switch. We'll connect this panel to the transfer switch, um, and I'll show you guys how all that's done. So, uh, if you guys want to see that, like, subscribe, hit the notification button. Um, if you guys haven't seen it, uh, we started directing people towards our website because we have so many different things out there. We have um, the air conditioner that's in my house. Let me show you guys real quick here. I love this thing. This thing is beautiful. We actually carry this on our website, and we have so many different models, not just this one. Um, these are perfect for solar. These are inverter units, and they even go up to five tons, so I don't care if you have a 2,000 square foot house. Um, you can replace your central air conditioning, and this is central air conditioning. Difference being is it takes way, way less electric. So we have these. We have grid-tied solar systems. Um, you guys see all the power generators we have. So um, copy and paste it. We're just going to put the link in for our website. And then, like I said, there's so many different things there. If you follow our other channel, V's Cooking with Love, um, we just opened the eBay store there. So we have an eBay store. We're on Amazon. Um, we're on Etsy. We have our, you know, different sites, our website, and different other stuff like that. So visit our website, www.smallhomeoffgridprepping.com, uh, uh, and you guys can see all the different products we have. They're really, really cool. So, um, like I said, what I'll do is uh, once I get this done, I pick up that disconnect. We're ready to hook all that up. We'll be making the next video. So, all right, guys, have a good day.